Look for a moment into these beady eyes. Look at this face. Do I look like a car thief? <laughs> Things aren't always what they seem, you know. Let me tell you a little story on myself. They say that confession's good for the soul. Sometimes it's a little hard on the ego, too. I got the call that my daughter had gone to the hospital. She was expecting and she was having some issues. And so I drove over there and pulled in beside her van at the emergency and uh, quickly ran in and left my keys in the car. And I, was, I just thought I'd be a second just to get the news. And I went in and, and they told me that she had been uh, sent up to labor. Well, she's a long way from having the baby. This kind of shook me up, you know, and your mind is filled with all of these what ifs and please Lord and uh, oh no. And, and somehow I quickly found my way up to uh, the labor department and went in to see her. Well, when I got in there, things were a lot better than I thought they were. You could hear the little baby's regular heartbeat on the monitor, and, and she was obviously resting in the Lord. And soon the doctor came in and checked her over completely. I could see the scan, see the little babe, and he said, yeah, this is uh, normal. Here's a little situation. That's probably what's happened, and uh, everything's fine, and you can go home. Whew. So I uh, I said, look, I'll go get your van and bring it around and I can scoot you home. So I, I went down to get her van and my car was gone. And my wife had warned me, don't leave the keys in the car. It was gone. So I called up 911 and told them that my, my car had been taken and the situation, I'd rushed into emergency, left my keys in the ignition, and, and now the car was gone. And so while I was waiting for the police, the security gentleman came out. Very nice gentleman came over and he was very kind. So I said, I noticed that there are cameras up there on the corner of the building. And he said, yeah, I think we'll be able to see what happened. And so away he went to look at the footage. What time exactly was it? And he went away to look at the footage. The police came around the county sheriff uh, because it's a county hospital. And he came around and again, very gentlemanly, very kind. And uh, he took all the details down. And, and then uh, as we were talking, the security agent came out again, the security officer. And, and he said, um, you know, I, I think the car may be over near the uh, parking garage over there. Um, should we go and see? And so he said, it's a county, the same county license plate, Octavia County, yes. And so anyway, so um, the officer guided in his vehicle and we followed him over and came around the corner. And sure enough, there's my car sitting there. And... Suddenly it dawned on me what had happened. <laughs> and so I, I got out and, and the security officer was there and I said to him, now, you were able to see pretty clearly on that camera what happened? And he said, yes. And I said, the, the culprit that stole the card, did he have white hair? Did he, did he have some uh, sort of blue tinted glasses kind of like this and maybe uh, blue trousers and maybe a shirt uh, pretty close to what mine looks like? And he said, actually... Uh, exactly like your shirt, sir. <laughs> uh, the officer said, "It's it's easy to understand. You were you were upset. You were concerned about your daughter. I didn't even remember moving the car. I just I just got up to that room as fast as I could, and uh, and sure enough, I was the I was the car thief. And you know, uh, I as I thought about it afterwards, my son-in-law said to me, you know." The lesson from this, of course, the first lesson is don't leave your keys in the car. But the lesson was uh, don't blame on the devil things that you've done yourself, right? And that's all true. But I was thinking of this little section of scripture. It's really a lovely little beautiful description of what God has done in the new creation. And it goes back to the first creation. This is in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. 
The God who commanded light to shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, in clay pots, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And then he goes on to say this, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Anything that humbles us is good for us. Anything that reminds us of human frailty points us away from ourselves to the Lord. How weak we really are. How, how ephemeral our strength. How quickly it dribbles away. And yet this scripture portrays for us a picture in which we're crackpots and, and the treasure that's in us isn't jewels exactly. In this context, it's light. And God commanded the light to shine out of darkness. There was no sun, no stars, no moon. It was the light of God that broke across this scene, this dark universe. And the light shone, coming from the very mind of God. But now we read, not that the light has shone, but that God himself, right? He has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And so how important it is for us to realize this, that in our frailty, in our mistakes, in those things in life in which we're embarrassed and uh, they're awkward and maybe we're found out to be not as strong and clever as we think we are. This is still an opportunity for the light to shine through us. A person who's got it all together has no place for the light to shine through them. But in the areas of our weakness and our frailty, areas where we don't have the words to say, right? We go to comfort somebody. We don't know what to say. It's in that very we don't know what to say moment, that the grace, the light, the glory of God shines through our cracks, shines through our weaknesses. And we're able in that moment not to justify ourselves, not to, not to try to keep up the image, but to allow the grace of God to shine through us. And in doing that, we have this wonderful opportunity not to put emphasis on the vessel of clay, but on the excellence of the power of the glory of God to shine through us. Not unto us, O Lord, but unto thy name give the glory. So may the Lord help you as you move through the day and we have these moments when we have to apologize and say we're sorry and confess that we're not as strong or clever as we think we are. But to realize that it's through this weakness, through this humanness, and through this vulnerability that the light of God's glory as manifested in the face of Jesus. Notice that point. It's not, it's not the glory of the wonderful creation, the power of the of constellations sweeping through space. No, it's, it's in the face of Jesus Christ. It's in the humanity that he used this human body, this human nature that manifested most beautifully, most graciously, most mercifully, most kindly. We see the glory of God most attractively through the humanity of the Lord Jesus. And so he says, we're hard pressed, we're perplexed, we're persecuted, we're struck down. We have all of these difficulties that come against us in our little clay pot. 
But we're not discouraged by this. We're not crushed by this. We're not perplexed by this. We know we're weak. But in our weakness, we discover his strength. In our frailty, we have the privilege of manifesting his grace. So, no handcuffs, no charges, no fine, just a smile and a few moments of talking together there in the parking lot about the wonderful grace that was shown to us and the grace that we need to show to people daily because in our frailty, we have the opportunity of manifesting his glory. <laughs>